Schools all over the world follow specific rules. However, Japanese schools are unique in this regard. It may be cleaning the classrooms or thorough dress inspections and physical growth of the students. Japanese schools are known for adherence to singular rules and peculiarities that differentiate these from the rest of the world. Let's discuss certain prominent aspects which will surely be of interest to you. But before we proceed further, would you mind clicking on the like and subscribe button? It'll really encourage us to put in more concerted efforts for making substantially interesting videos for our viewers. Commencement of Schools Like students in other parts of the world, Japanese students are always keen to meet their colleagues once schools open. So they also wait anxiously to join their classmates and enjoy their company. Be mindful, schools in Japan don't commence studies in September, as we're familiar in most Western countries. Japanese students start going to schools in April each year. Surely it's spring season, once cherries are in full bloom. They join their classes on the first charming day of the year. Their educational calendar consists of three distinct terms. First term covers the period from beginning of April to the mid of July. It's followed by the second term from the start of September to the end of December. Ultimately, the third term is from commencement of January to the beginning of March. This system affords them opportunities to enjoy several weeks of vacations in every season, including a good stretch of holidays during summers. You'd be wondering about the well-spread vacations enjoyed by the Japanese students. Hold on, they also face a peculiar disadvantage, having very limited break before start of new education year. In addition, a very serious issue is confronted by those students who desire to continue their studies abroad. Education year in the Western country starts in September, which does not coincide with Japanese educational calendar. People in Japan are quite in harmony with their education system and don't want to alter it. They would never like to begin their studies on the day when trees start dropping leaves instead of the day when flowers are in full blossom. Healthy food for the students Another very interesting practice which makes Japanese students unique from students in the rest of the world is that they take lunch at school. This practice initially started in 1889. Naturally, Japanese students also like to take delicious food as we all desire to have. It may be hamburgers, steaks, fries and so many other things. Japanese schools, particularly elementary and middle level students, are not permitted to eat hamburgers, french fries or steaks. They are served healthy, balanced and nutritious meals which comprise seasonal ingredients. It's hygienically cooked by the trained chefs under supervision of nutritionists who decide the menu carefully. Students are served with vegetables, fish, meat, soup, rice and surely a bottle of milk. Lunch is consumed while sitting on a dining table in the classroom. At times, their teacher also joins them in the lunch, which helps in creating a special cordial relationship between them. Lunch provides all ingredients required by the students at this growing age, so they have strong bodies and healthy minds. At all times, the food may not be to the liking of kids, but guys, they don't have a choice. Per force, they have to eat the served food. They're educated to eat food with the help of chopsticks and ensure even a single grain of rice is not wasted. Thanks to the special emphasis on nutritious foods, Japanese students enjoy good health. Rather, they're considered one of the healthiest students in the world, having the lowest obesity rates. School Cleaning Japanese students are not different from other students. After spending a long hectic day at school, they also desire to go home and wish to visit other entertaining places like clubs and shopping centers. But before that, they are required to perform a very important task. They have to clean their school before leaving for home. Japanese students are accustomed to this practice right from the beginning of school education. Surprisingly, cleaning rag, known as zoikon in Japanese, is part of the items supplied by the school. This practice in Japan is well known as osuji jikan, that is, cleaning time. Irrespective of the fact that whether the school is a public or private owned, students have to clean it daily before leaving for home. They clean classrooms, toilets and other areas used in routine. Sometimes the activity is conducted in the company of their teachers. Apart from daily cleaning, they have to do osoji. Do you understand what that stands for? It means cleaning the complete school from top to bottom even during vacations. It makes them have a neat and clean school throughout the year. This habit of school cleaning makes Japanese students a distinguished community worldwide. The students in most of the countries don't resort to cleaning their classrooms as a routine, so they look at Japanese students with utter curiosity, especially when they find Japanese students doing it in Western educational institutions. Whatsoever be the views of the people, the Japanese students hardly mind it as they feel proud of their magnificent tradition. 
They also derive strength from their reputation of being very responsible citizens. Japanese custom of school cleaning is expected to be projected as a practice worth emulating by the students of other countries who wish to create a sense of responsibility and ownership amongst its new generation. School Uniform Like other students in the world, Japanese students get ready every day for going to school. They have to pay special attention to their dress so they don't look odd. Do you think they can put on any attire they wish? A big no, ladies and gentlemen. Students in Japan are bound to wear a specific uniform known as seifuku. They have to put on the school uniform, which comprises sailor-style shorts with jackets or pants with jackets for boys. At times, white shirt, tie, white socks, shoes, and other accessories are made part of uniform. Students wearing seifuku look very elegant and smart. However, their liberty to choose attire of their liking is greatly restricted, and they may not feel happy about this. Interestingly, requirement of putting on compulsory uniform and specific uniform items does not stop here. At certain places, they have to wear even underwear of specific colors. They sound a little bit extra, don't you think? Well, beyond the dress, students are required to adhere to particular instructions related to physical appearance as well. Certain aspects may further curtail their freedom as they can't wear accessories or ornaments, have specific hairstyles, no dyeing of hair is permitted, etc. They're supposed to have jet black hair. Some schools compel the students to adopt a specifically uniform hairstyle, to the extent that everyone has to have perfect black straight hair with no dye used. This rule becomes quite cumbersome for the students who possess hair with light colors and need to apply dye for turning their hair black. In some other schools, they may be required to prove that the light hair color and curly hairs are natural. Japanese students can breathe a sigh of relief as these stringent rules are being objected and pointed out by the concerned people. Therefore, they may have hoped to get relaxation or complete change of these rules. But a matter of real concern and disappointment remains, the agony suffered by the students who were expelled from the school for violating these rules. Resultantly, they faced loss of esteem in society and went through trauma. Removing Shoes Outside Classrooms Punctuality is the hallmark of Japanese schools. Therefore, students use various means including going on foot, riding bicycle, or traveling by bus for reaching the schools. They have to be punctual, as when they arrive in school, they follow a very strange procedure. Students as well as staff remove their shoes at the entrance and place these in the lockers, so that they don't make the inside of the school building dirty. Do you think they go to classes and roam around within the premises of school barefooted? No. Actually, every student and staff member has a pair of slippers or indoor shoes which they put on and keep feet warm. Certainly, sometimes their uniform seems quite shabby and ugly due to slippers or indoor shoes. Despite a bit of seemingly ugliness, the students follow the rule diligently as it assures that they're all on the same footing. This habit is ingrained in them to the extent that it works as second nature. Some of the students who go abroad for studying inadvertently remove their shoes before entering the classroom. Limit on sneezing in the class Japanese students are known to follow the rules very religiously. In different schools, they may have to follow certain very strange as well as stringent rules. One such rule concerns restrictions on sneezing inside the classroom. Do you think they just cannot sneeze? No, they can, but not more than a specific number of times. In some schools, students can sneeze a maximum of three times in a class. If they do it more, they can relieve their nostrils, but they are required to leave the classroom and not allowed to continue there. Students can feel a bit more fortunate as slowly and gradually more Japanese organizations are raising their voices against such exaggerated and strict rules like not sneezing more than a specified number of times. Hopefully one day this restriction will be removed and the students would be free to sneeze freely, but ensuring that they're not ill and not spreading germs which may endanger the health of others. Well, we have to admit that this unique requirement makes the Japanese students worth pity. Promotion to next grade Usually, students in Japan work hard throughout the year for getting good grades. However, there can also be some students who pay less attention to their studies. They may be not that good at learning or not interested, or even have some problems due to which they don't attend class. But surprisingly, they don't have to worry about promotion to the next class or grade compared with students in many other countries who may have to repeat the particular class for getting good grades. In Japanese schools, especially primary and junior high schools, Irrespective of the results, students are not permitted to repeat the ranks. Rather, they focus on studies without worrying about the grades and are promoted to the next class without any formal examination. 
Although in this case the students enjoy a great advantage, it's not without certain negatives. Promotion to the next grade doesn't assure that the students have been good at learning. Some of them may have been facing difficulties in certain subjects and lacking comprehension. They'll definitely be facing trouble while applying for admission in high school and university. Surely, Japanese students are well aware of the fact that good academic performance is a prerequisite for success in life. Therefore, they put in the utmost effort to overcome shortcomings and pass exams with good results. Now, it's okay if you're feeling envious of them and consider the Japanese students very lucky people. Summer Vacations Full of Activities Students all over the world are fascinated by the mere thought of having summer vacations. After learning about ethics, good conduct and hard work for getting proficiency in different subjects, students generally feel exhausted and crave holidays. They plan to visit hill stations, clubs, beaches, etc. for entertainment, as well as relaxing and enjoying with family members. Hold on guys, this dream hardly comes true for Japanese students. You may be wondering why. Well, summer vacations in Japanese schools are quite different from what we have in our countries. Japanese students remain highly committed during vacations, as their activities and sports training continue uninterrupted. Not to mention homework, which they have to complete. They accomplish so many different activities that their energy is totally burnt out and desperately longing for respite at the end of vacations. Would someone consider these exhausting days vacations? Never mind. Japanese students don't bother much and go back to classes with a new determination. However, probably in their adulthood, instead of remembering the good old days, they'd be haunted by ugly memories of their summer vacation spent working hard all day long. Sex Education Japanese schools introduced sex education in their curriculum in 1992. Sex education is imparted starting from elementary schools so as to develop awareness among the kids on this important aspect of life. But the sex education syllabus in the land of the rising sun is not competitive with other countries of the world. Japanese schools provide textbooks to the students on sex education. Government in Japan can claim to have laid down its own standards for sex education to the children. However, a bone of contention is amount of knowledge imparted to the students as most of the experts are critical of this syllabus. You'd be interested to know why is it so? Experts say that Japanese schools are not delivering proper sex education as the curriculum is sketchy. It even doesn't provide sufficient information regarding reproductive organs, the process of reproduction, sexual behavior, and health issues related to this. Lack of information may be due to incoordination between health organizations and schools. In addition, it can also be attributed to the concept of modesty in the Japanese society. Most of the experts are of the opinion that sex education syllabus in Japanese schools is much below the international standards. Whatsoever the case, Japanese schools can be really proud of the fact that they were cognizant of the importance of sex education for their children for a substantially longer period than other nations. At the moment, the teenagers manage to get sex and health education as well as considerable support through the efforts of health organizations and educational system. However, an important point to note remains the concern regarding deficiency of syllabus in Japanese schools compared with the sex education standards evolved at international levels. Today we've introduced you to certain very important aspects of education in Japanese schools. What's your opinion about these rules? Which one did you find amazing and how many of these are quite shocking for you? Do share your views with us. And don't forget to like and click the subscribe button for getting notified first about our amazing videos in the future. Goodbye.